me up. Uh, okay. Tonight, from Bishop Ludden High School in Syracuse, New York, it's OHSL Class CD Division I action as the Bishop Ludden Gale. Welcome to Bishop Ludden High School, along with George Straub. I'm Ted DeLuca, and you want to talk about a fantastic atmosphere for a ball game tonight, the loud crowd, the history between CBA and Bishop Ludden. We have all the factors tonight, George. Yeah, it reminds me of the old parochial league. I mean, the fans are spilling out right to the edge of the court. It's alive. It's crazy. you got the guys and the girls cheerleading. Everything is set up for a fantastic game. Let's take a look at the division standings as we preview tonight's game. Both of these teams having very successful seasons, and as we see, tied for first place. Well, you know, the funny thing is, C CBA and Ludden is always a huge grudge game. It's a big game, but tonight, it means everything. I mean, it's for first place in the league. It's for sectional seedings. It sets everything up, and I think it's terrific, especially for the seniors, because uh, both teams got a lot of seniors, and they've worked hard to get to this point. Bishop Ludden with a chance to exact some revenge tonight. These two teams met earlier this season at CBA. Ludden built a 15-point lead. Then CBA switched to that 1-3 zone defense, gave the Gaelic Knights all kinds of trouble. Yeah, well, uh, the, the final score was not indicative of how close the game is and how evenly matched these two teams are. you got a situation here where CBA wants to get out and run. Ludden traditionally known as a half-court kind of team, but they're not afraid to run either, so I think you know it's going to be a great matchup. Before we meet both head coaches, what are the keys in your mind for Bishop Ludden tonight to bounce back from that 16-point loss earlier this season? Well, obviously you said it. The, the, there's been a lot of talk about beating that one 3 one zone. So a kid like Jason Lazarski is the point guard. They're going to have to get settled, organized, and know how they want to attack. CBA, on the other hand, is a little mismatched height-wise. They're going to have to be scrappy on the boards. I think they want to do a lot of three-point shooting, get the ball out, and get the tempo up. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe the, the tale will be told is how tightly the ball game is called. I mean, if Ludden's going to uh, be able to dominate inside, it could present problems for CBA, and maybe CBA's got the answer with the outside shooting. And you have to believe that the home court advantage for Ludden tonight will play a factor as well. We have an overflow crowd here at Bishop Ludden, some folks watching this ball game on closed circuit TV in the cafeteria. Ludden comes in tonight with four straight sectional titles. CBA has won 27 of its last 29 games. This should be a sensational contest. We'll come back after this timeout and talk with CBA head coach Buddy Wachlinski right after this on Time Warner Cable. If you got kids, then you ought to know they're going to need lots of shots as they grow. Not the shots through a net, but the kind that they get from your doctor or clinic. That's your best bet. Shots, shots. Get those shots. Now shots cost money. We know that's true. But vaccines for children can see you through. It's free vaccine. And oh, what a thrill to get your kids shots without a big bill. So call this number to learn a lot and give your kids health your very best shot. Shot, shot. Get, get those shots. Shot. Welcome back to a raucous Bishop Ludden High School getting set for tonight's big matchup between the Gaelic Knights and the brothers of CBA. We're now joined by CBA head coach Buddy Wachlinski and coach... The season so far has been highly successful earlier this week. You avenged the only loss of the season you've had. Yeah, we've had a, a great run with this group of seniors especially. You know, this, this team right here is 27-2 and two over the last 29 games, and they just play so hard. You see, they play with emotion, and it's a fun group to coach. What are your recollections of the first meeting of the season between these two teams? Ludden built the early lead, you switched the defense, and uh, totally uh, got them off their game. Yeah, well, it was like two separate games. The, for the first 13 minutes or so, we couldn't do anything right. They couldn't do anything wrong. We were down 15, and all of a sudden, the second half, it just reversed. So uh, I think it's going to be a great basketball game. The, the score wasn't indicative of what happened last time. I think this is uh, these are two evenly matched teams, and whoever plays the best is going to win. Let's meet your key players now. First of all, number 24, Jeff Seeger. Yeah, Jeff's uh, uh, probably one of the best athletes we have in the school right now, and uh, probably over about the last two weeks, he's just taken control of some games. He's strong. He goes to the basket hard. He's uh, great at the top of the 1-3-1. One, so he's, uh, he's going to go to college playing either football, baseball, or basketball. I think he'll have his choice. And how about a familiar name to uh, basketball fans in the Syracuse area for years and years and years, Joe Leon. Yeah, Joey's, uh, again, his senior year, he's one of our leaders. He's one of the captains. Uh, as he goes, we go. Last time he did a great job, even though he didn't score too many points, did a great job on Lazarski defensively. So we're hoping tonight that if he can come up and, and do a solid game offensively and do the job defensively, that could be one of the keys to our victory. 
Coach, finally in your mind, keys to victory against this very difficult London team tonight. Yeah, well, I guess, look, they're big. And uh, so for us, uh, we have to do the job off the boards. I thought we did a pretty good job last time. Uh, we want to control the tempo, and our tempo is pretty quick. We want to push the ball up and down the floor and score. So I guess that's really what it comes down to, tempo. Best of luck. Should be a great game. Yeah, I hope so. Thanks, Ted. Thanks, Coach. Buddy Wiklinski, head coach of the CBA Brothers. What a game it'll be as they get set to take on the Bishop Ludden Gaelic Knights. George Straub talks with Pat Donnelly right after this on Time Warner Cable. Why would anybody give someone they don't know a gift? They do it because this gift saves lives. And the need for it is desperate. Please give blood. There's a life to be saved right now. Call the American Red Cross at 1-800-GIVE-LIFE. We're here with Bishop Blood and Coach Pat Donnelly. Pat, the place is crazy. Going to be an advantage for you tonight? Well, I hope so. I mean, I think CBA has as many people here as we do. But uh, it's a great atmosphere for high school basketball and always playing home. You think it's a little bit of an advantage, but in a big game like this, you just got to roll the dice and see what happens. Another great year for you. Tell us a little bit about the team so far. It's been a great year. I mean, we really got a nice team. We've got a good group of kids. They've worked hard every day. You know, and the, the rec win-loss record speaks for itself. Uh, we're 16-2 and two overall. We're 15-1 we're and one or so or 14-1 and one in the league. Lost to CJ the first time. And it, it's, it's one of the few leagues that has a, a 1-2 rivalry. Most of the leagues are a little top-heavy this year. And, you know, this is what it's all about. Now, there's been a lot of talk about that first game and the runs and this and that. What's the big key tonight? What do you think? Well, I mean, first of all, you got to match the emotion. I know we're going to be up for it, but, you know, you got to come out and not let a team steamroll over you. we gotta, we got to do things early. You know, for us to win tonight, we've got to attack the one through one a lot better than we did the first time. We've got to keep CBA off the board. We've got to keep them from being explosive. They can score a lot of points. They may pull a few tricks on you. may not know what's going to happen. Well, you know, I played against Buddy in high school and college, so there's always something up his sleeve. Now, a couple guys are going to help you get the job done. First, Chris Campolita. Chris Campolita is a fifth-year senior. He tore his ACL before the start of his senior year and came back for academic reasons. Chris is a real scorer. First time against CBA, he, he didn't score a lot of points. He was in foul trouble. So we need a, a big effort out of him tonight. And also Jason Lazarski. Jason's a, a two-guard converted to a point guard, and he handled, has handled the pressure for us all year at the point. Uh, again, we need him to be steady to handle the pressure and, and to settle things down if it gets out a little bit out of control. Keep yourself under control tonight, Pat, and good luck. It might be tougher. Thanks, George. Thank you. Now, after a short break, we'll be right, right back with tonight's opening tip. Getting accepted to college wasn't easy. But Tony kept his nose in the books, studied hard for the SATs, yet he faced an even tougher problem, how to pay for it all. The answer, the Air National Guard. While serving his country and community, Tony's getting the benefits of tuition assistance, the Montgomery GI Bill, and a steady paycheck. The Air National Guard. Welcome back to Bishop Ludden High School. A huge crowd on hand for tonight's battle between the Gaelic Knights and the Brothers of CBA. We told you during the open about the overflow crowd here at Ludden tonight. And this is the scene in the cafeteria during tonight's junior varsity game. You can see the closed circuit televisions in effect and a huge crowd in the cafeteria watching this game. The CBA brothers have been introduced and now we'll meet the Bishop Ludden Gaelic Knights as well. The CBA brothers starting lineup for head coach Buddy Wiklinski, Seeger and Lampuri, the forwards, Law at center, Leon and Anderson in the backcourt. Three of the five starters are seniors, and this CBA team has won 27 of its last 29 games. A tough test tonight, the Bishop Ludden Gaelic Knights, coached by that man, Pat Donnelly, Lazarski and Antuna in the backcourt, Siegler, the big center, Chris Campolita and Pat Campolita up front, the forwards, and four of the five starters for Pat Donnelly are seniors. So of the ten players, George, on the court to start this game, seven will be seniors, and the game doesn't get much bigger than one we'll see tonight. Well, that's exactly what we said. It's nice for the seniors to have such a big game like this and have it mean so much. I'm just amazed at how calm both coaches are. It, you know, I think that it's tough. You know, I'd, I'd be shaking in my boots, but... They're ready, you know, going. Uh, it's neat that they can be that calm. And our two officials tonight, Mike Preston and Bill Hepler, 
I think, you know, it's going to be a tough game to officiate because you got that intensity level and you got everybody right on top of you. They've been having a hard time. If you look around the court, they're just constantly pushing people back. It's, it's a tough job tonight for John Cosgrove, the athletic director, just to manage this crowd. Definitely, it is a huge crowd throughout the building here at Bishop Lutton High School. Of course, the Gaelic Knights in their home, white trimmed in green. The CBA brothers in the visiting purple trimmed in gold. A lot of green and white, a lot of purple and gold here in the stands. A huge contingent of CBA fans has made the trip out to Bishop Ludden tonight. In the state rankings, you look at this week's Class C poll, CBA is ranked second in the state in Class C as we take a look at that. CBA supporter, the Bishop Ludden Gaelic Knights with their cheering section as well, ranked sixth in the state, Class C. CBA comes in 17-1 overall, 12-1 in the league. They avenged their only loss of the season earlier this week with an 86-72 win over Cato Meridian Wednesday night. Ludden is 16-2 overall, 12-1 in the league, of course. So that loss to CBA back on January 24th, two weeks ago tonight, a 66-50 defeat at the hands of the brothers on their home court. And then over the weekend, a, lo a loss for a Ludden at Rochester McQuaid, 64-55. That a non-conference defeat. We have a delay in the start of tonight's game with uh, the concerns about the overflow crowd. You have to make sure that all the fans who are sitting at court level are off the playing surface. There's just no place to put them. I mean, they're jammed in all the alleyways, and they're just trying to get them cleared. Uh, so that, you know, it'll be safe. I mean, plus you have that three-foot rule. You want to be able to have the guy that's inbounding the ball on the sidelines have some room. So, you know, it's going to take, it's like I said earlier, it's now, tough crowd management. What we're seeing here is uh, a law enforcement official is telling people that they have to make sure the exits aren't blocked. You can't block the fire exits, obviously uh, a violation of the fire code. And uh, this building seats under 1,000 in compliance with uh, the fire code. And I'll tell you what, we have uh, a much larger crowd than the 1,000 fans that can be accommodated in this particular gym. So before we can get this game underway, all of these details and safety issues have to be taken care of. Right, and you know, as a, from a coaching standpoint, I was saying earlier how calm both coaches are, I wouldn't like this delay because you're, you, you, know, you plan it for two things. The kids want to come out. You don't have to psych these kids up tonight. They are supercharged and ready to go. You almost have to tone them down a little so that they play their game without being, you know, out of control. And now you got them like caged lions are ready to be released, and you got to hold them back a little longer, hold them back a little longer. So the sooner we can get this game going, I think the better for the kids. And we see the players now just standing around on the court. A few moments ago, they had been uh, circling and, and pacing a bit. And uh, we can tell you that uh, in the time it's going to take to get this game underway, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, tonight's opening tip-off as Ludden entertains CBA here on Time Warner Cable. You just feel good when your body's healthy, your mind alive, and your spirit soaring. Your whole family loves it because it's fun. And people are so friendly, it feels like coming home. The YMCA. You belong here. We build strong kids, strong families, strong communities. Welcome back to Bishop Ludden High School. Still waiting for tonight's opening tip-off. The Ludden Gaelic Knights entertaining the brothers of CBA. And it is pandemonium here at Bishop Ludden High School. The game hasn't even started yet. <laughs> and the two uh, cheering sections for the respective schools are shouting they, back and forth at each other. They better pace themselves. They're going to burn out before the fourth <laughs> quarter at this rate. There you see the home team Bishop Ludden cheering section here on their home court tonight and the home court advantage ought to be very important now we're getting set and a huge round of applause by fans of both schools as the ball is about to be put in the air and the cap is controlled by Ludden Bishop Ludden moving left to right here in the first quarter and of course CBA moves right to left ball lost out of bounds but tapped away from Pat Campolita down low. He had a great game. First time these two teams played. 
18 points in that first meeting against CBA. Well, Pat Yomi, a soda. The CBA came out in a man, not in their 1-3-1. So, you know, that's their, that's their main D. They want to come out confident on the visitor's court here and say they can play their style of game without being intimidated. We did talk about that before the game, the first meeting. Ludden built 15-point lead. CBA switched to a 1-3-1 zone. And the brother is able to pull out the win going away, winning by 16. Seeger drives. He's fouled. His shot won't go. And they will call it an offensive foul. Yep. Jason Lazarski stepped in and took the charge. See Seeger pounding down the lane. Jason Lazarski gives himself up for the team. And he was there. He was set. Good call. Lazarski doing a great job to take the charge. First foul against Seeger. It's an offensive foul, of course. The key player for CBA, along with Joe Leon. Seeger comes into this matchup averaging 16 and a half points a game. That's tops on CBA. And once again, the brothers will take over in the backcourt. Yeah. Two kind of ragged trips for the Ludden kids on the offensive end. They're going to have to settle down. You know, it's a little bit of that pregame hype kind of getting to them. Bishop Ludden in a man-to-man defense. And we have a traveling violation called for top of the key against Chris Campolita. So perhaps some jitters, George, for both teams here I, in the early going. I think it's natural. I mean, and then, like I said, then that, what was it, at least a five-minute delay while they're trying to get the court, you know, around the areas, around the court, see. Uh, it, it can add to the tension a little. Both teams with two turnovers apiece as our first quarter is underway. No score. That shot rejected by CBA and Chris Campolita. Here come the brothers looking to get on the scoreboard for the first time. Spinning move, shot in the air, and the first bucket of the game scored by John Law, the big man in the middle for CBA. That was a good, strong move. It's nice to get on track with that first one. Law is averaging 13.3 points and five rebounds a game. 6'3 junior in the pivot for Buddy Wiklinski. Another wow. rejection. Two blocks on the CBA kids pump. I mean, they're playing good defense. Law comes up with a blocked shot, and we have a foul <laughs> called against Bishop Ludden and Chris Campolita. See, Law scored on the other end, and down at this end, he comes back and makes a nice block inside. That was a good job. 15th blocked shot of the season for John Law. CBA controls in the offensive end. Seeger. We're trying to figure out if that tattoo on his left bicep is permanent or temporary. And CBA loses the ball out of bounds. Well, you ask him, because he's an intense kid, so you can be the guy to ask after. I might wait until after the game oh, okay. to find out. Pat Donnelly in his 10th season at Bishop Ludden, the career mark of 183 wins and 47 losses. Not too shabby. I don't believe Pat's been around that long. CBA sticking with the man-to-man -man defense. And we have a foul called at the top of the key against CBA and Sam Lampuri, the 6'2 junior. Yeah, Sam, Sam Lampuri is a defensive specialist. See if he tries to step in, see he didn't have position. And he's a little mismatch size-wise with Campolita. Chris Campolita known to be a prolific scorer. So he's, that's why uh, Sam is on him. You talked about the officiating before the game, George. It seems to be they're calling it pretty tightly so far. Yeah, it, it'll be a key. I mean, if they call it real tight, I, I believe it'll make it tough for CBA kids to play that man-to-man -man defense because they got to cheat a little bit. I mean, they've got it. They're outmatched physically. Backdoor pass. The shot won't go. CBA controls with a rebound. Jeff Seeger comes down with it. Three-pointer up and good. Joe Leon with his first tray of the night. It's a 5-0 CBA lead. Ludden wants to try to score in a hurry. Ball is lost. Leon comes up with it. Lead pass to Lampuri. He drives and he's fouled. Yep. That's exactly what CBA wants. Get it out and run. Right now it's going their way. Watch. A quick rebound and a great outlet by Joe Leon. And Sam Lampuri is going to just finish it. Not there soon enough to get that charge. He slid into him. That is the second personal foul called against Chris Campolita very early in this game. We will keep an eye on that. 5.24 left to go in the first quarter. CBA has a 5-0 lead, and Campolita already has two personal fouls. Campolita the leading scorer for Ludden. 
averaging nearly 16 points a game, the 6'4 senior. And before the game, it was nice to see the Bishop Ludden seniors get some recognition for their careers here with a plaque and a firm handshake from head coach Pat Donnelly. And a very entertaining floor show now from the CBA cheerleaders. It was nice to see him bring the parents out, too. It's always nice to bring the parents out on senior night. Definitely. Now, here's the quick up-tempo CBA wants. Joe Leone sets up on that three-point arc and lets her rip. They want to take a lot of threes tonight if they can get that break out and run. I'm surprised early that Ludden hasn't jumped into their man-to-man -man offense a little better. CBA's defense has done the job. I mean, they talked awful lot about that 1-3-1, one, one, but they're doing it with man right now and causing some problems for Ludden. Well, the interesting part of that is they have the 1-3-1 in reserve for when they need it later in the game if, if they should find themselves in that situation. Nice steal by Siegler. He promptly loses it back to CBA. Bounce pass on the baseline. Lampuri is hacked. And we have a jump ball called on the baseline. Nice block in there by one of the Ludden defenders. Watch the block inside. From behind, it was a good clean block to be stripped. And then the tie-up down low. Good call. But, boy... There's not going to be any give up in any player on either team. They're just going to go after each other. Steve Antuna took it away from behind for Ludden. CBA with the possession arrow will take over in the offensive end. Entry Whoa. pass and a bucket for CBA. John Law once again. He has four points. And CBA has a 7-0 lead. See if they can get a good shot off this time. Another block, but this time it's going to be a foul. I mean, that's three shots. Three shots out of like four trips down where the ball has been blocked. This time it, it cost him a foul, but watch the turn and we'll see who gets the foul here. That Law draws the foul, yeah. He reached into him to make the block that time, but he did get ball. That was a good look at the basket for Pat Campolita. At the line. You see his numbers on the season as he drains the first free throw. Shooting 73% from the line. I am so surprised to see CBA block so many shots out of the uh, gate so quick. Chris Campolita, Pat's brother, on the bench with two personal fouls here in the early going. So, Pat Campolita makes both free throws, and it's 7-2 to two CBA. Ludden's on the board. Nice ball movement by the brothers. Seeger hangs in the air, then passes away. The three-pointer's up off back iron, and we have a traveling violation as Joe Leone grabbed the ball and then hit the deck as he collided with a Ludden player. Well, look how intense the CBA kids are. Get up, come on, man, get up, we're getting back in this. Watch this rebound. Up they go, and he just gets, I mean, they are aggressive going after the rebound. Joe Leon going in real strong. Takes a hard fall, but he's okay. He's up and he's fine. Sean Anderson misfiring on the three-pointer. Shooting 37% in three-point range this season. We'll watch him as our game progresses. Ludden down five early, seven to two. CBA sticking with the man-to-man -man defense. Good look at the basket from the foul line and the bucket by Mark Siegler. Quickly back the other way, Ludden with the steal. Steve Antuna comes up with it. And they chose not to run that time. You notice that how Steve pulled up, looked for his point guard, Lazarski, wanted to get him settled. Antuna for three. It's good! Here We're comes tied. Ludden, here comes Ludden, right back. 7-7, and just like that, George, that 7-0 lead has been erased. Momentum just switched, didn't it? Foul top of the key by Antuna as he collided with Dave Paulus, who has checked into the game for CBA. There you see Antuna picking up a personal foul after he drilled that three-pointer. This is a physical game. I said it would be a hard game to ref because you know the emotions are high and there's going to be a lot of bumping and shoving. Nice feed for Anderson into the left corner. He'll reset the offense for CBA. Brought into the basket. Nice pass inside, and the shot won't fall for CBA. And Joe Leone on the baseline after the great feed. What a feed. Watch. See if he can slip this through. I don't know how he slips this ball through there. Look at boom. And they're looking for Joe Leone because they know he's a scorer. And Joe knows what to do when he gets inside. Makes a nice move to get it up. Joe Leone, a 61% shooter from the line, makes his first attempt. Paulus, who made that pass, is a sophomore. He's had quite a positive impact 
on the brothers this season for head coach Buddy Wiklinski. That was a sneaky little pass, wasn't it? I didn't think he had room to get it through there, but he did. Leone makes the first, and this is the second. Ludden controls the rebound. Eight to seven, CBA on top. There you see our time remaining in our first quarter tonight. We have a kick ball against CBA, so Ludden will retain control in the front court. Let's see if they can run an out-of-bounds play. CBA caught Ludden napping the last time on an out-of-bounds play. See what Ludden can serve up here. Uh-oh, trapped in the corner. Ludden trying to maintain that 7-1 run. It's 9-1. Siegler scores again in the paint. Right. Siegler's been big. I mean, he's been the guy who seems to be getting himself open all around, so he's giving him a good lift here. Wide open, top of the key. The three-pointer's up and good. The Joe Leon with his second three-pointer of the night. Yeah, you can't leave, lose sight of Joe Leon because you know that's a specialty. He's going to let it go if you let him alone on that three-point arc. So the help defense can't get... Lose sight of the three-point shooters. Great feed by Lazarski to Sigler again. He's been big this quarter for him. He certainly has. Six points for Sigler. Seven points for Leon. Lampuri drives. Misses a left-handed layup. The rebound controlled by CBA. Nearly a backcourt violation. And they're letting him play toward midcourt as Anderson was smacked. The open jumper is missed by the brothers. Rebound controlled by Ludden. Nice job by Siegler to battle for that basketball. There has not been one uncontested easy rebound yet. Every rebound has been fought for. Manny Martinez has checked in for Ludden, number 21. Driving baseline, Campolito lays it in. He shows a nice move on the baseline. Good quickness for a big guy. Four points for Pat Campolito. Chris is still on the bench with two fouls. Lampuri kicks it back outside. Driving left-handed shot won't go. Siegler with the rebound. Ludden taking some time off the clock here, walking the ball well, up the court. We said they would be more patient. They'd rather see a half-court game. I gotta believe that. And the CBA wants, you know, wants it a full-court game. Siegler drives to the basket, misses the shot. Rebound comes to Lampuri. He looks a little tired, Mark. He's had a real long quarter. He's really worked hard. Long three-pointer. Rattles off the rim. It's taken down by Pat Campolita. Joe Leone threw that one up for about 22 feet. Ball mishandled top of the key, but Lazarski gets it back. Everything is being challenged defensively by CBA. They really got a hand in every lane. Both teams really working on defense. Steal by Lampuri in the backcourt. And they got out fast this time. Ludden not back. CBA finishes. Dave Paulus with his first bucket of the night. 13-13. 35 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Lazarski walks it up. Campolita springs for three. Rolls around the rim. There's another lead pass. They got to get back quicker, Ludden. Paulus again. And he draws the foul. How many attempted charges? I mean, I mean the defense. How many times has the defense attempted to draw a charge tonight? This has got to be about the fifth time we've seen it, maybe sixth. And definitely, can't believe it. Never had position. Tried to manufacture that one when he, he just should have let him go. Either let him go or try to intimidate the shot. Now, the great thing about that is the guys are getting back on defense to get in position to try to draw a charge. Well, see, that time he wasn't. He didn't have the last two right, times. But he made the, the effort to get down yes, the court. Yeah, but discretion is the better part of valor sometimes because you don't want to get in foul trouble. You already got Chris Campbell in foul trouble. Don't give, serve up a foul in a situation like that. It's only the first quarter. If you're established, do it. See, TBA has beaten him down the floor. And they're trying to make Paulus earn it from the line, and he misses them both, so perhaps a good foul. CBA controls the rebound, and the bucket is scored by Brian Sacco off the bench. Big play. Critical mistake by Ludden to let him get in there and get that rebound off the free throw. Sacco is tough to deal with at 6'3", 230. Ludden with 10 seconds to go in the quarter, trails it by 2, 15-13. Five seconds to go. Baseline drive shot rejected by CBA. 
And that is the end of our first quarter. So CBA doing a good job on both ends of the court. Ludden hanging tough. 15-13, CBA leads first quarter down. Second quarter coming up next here on Time Warner Cable. Even exercise your face muscles. The YMCA. You belong here. We build strong kids, strong families, strong communities. Getting set for the start of the second quarter. And the head coach of the CBA brothers, Buddy Wiklinski, now in his 13th season. Career record of 140 wins, 136 losses. George, the sport coat is already off. It's gone. I, I was teasing a little bit. I said, buddy, that's a great tie for tonight's game. But didn't manage the, the uh, sport uh, the suit too much. So maybe he got the message. But I want to tell you, he's got to be real happy with his team's defensive effort. Four blocks, about four or five steals, I'd say, they had. And they've triggered their break, which is what they want to do. That look good for the TV cameras. And that matching wardrobe in place. Art Harrison is checked in for London, wearing number 14. 15-13, CBA on top as we begin our second quarter. There's Kemp lead inside, and he's made a nice move. See, if they can isolate him, remember they said the first game, he was real big, came up big in the first quarter, and then they kind of shut him down when they went into their zone. So he hurt him in man-to-man, -man, and it would be a good idea maybe to go back to him a little bit. He is tough to defend in the paint. Jump shot from the near side. Seager's shot won't fall. Sacco, another rebound and bucket. Quite a lift by Brian Sacco off the bench. He's got four points now. Two big putbacks. That one from about 12 feet away, and he banked it in. I like it. Use that glass. Wazarski is harassed between the circles. Finally regains possession of the ball. Harrison controls. Pat Campolita kicks it back outside for Lazarski. They just let the kid look out of sync offensively. This is not their normal offensive pattern. We told you a moment ago, Art Harrison has checked in. Our player of the game for a Bishop Ludden football contest earlier this season. And Ludden throws the ball out of bounds with the shot clock winding down. Yeah, they have done it. This, look at the statistics here. You can see uh, right off the bat, Ludden 6 for 14. Uh, CBA 6 for 14, excuse me, and Ludden 5 for 11. Only 11 shots. There's been a lot of turnovers, and that's been the difference. You see Ludden with 7, CBA with 5, but they don't mind them so much because they want to run, and the rebounds even, so the CBA kids have done a great job on the boards. Both teams attacking on both ends of the court. Harrison comes up with the steal. He will drive and finish. It hasn't been what you would call a smooth game. It's been intense. But the smoothness of the offense, but a little bumpy, but that's just due to the emotion. A lot of hustle by both teams on both ends of the court, no question about that. CBA tries to work the pass inside for a cutting Sam Lampuri. Nice defense by Ludden. Pat Donnelly still has the sport coat on. Temperatures rising here, it might not last. Seeger misfires from the corner. He is yet to score tonight, averaging 16.4 points per game. Three-pointer on the way. It's good! Jason Lazarski drills his first three of the evening. Yeah, that's about the first open shot he's got, and he took advantage of it. Lampuri to Sacco. Shot blocked! Pat Campolita knocks it out of bounds. <laughs> These guys are going to spend themselves. They're just, everybody's going after the ball. Watch this hustle to come back and get the block. Pat can't believe this is not here, you know. And the great hustle almost, Harris almost gets that ball and saves it in for Ludden. And there's Jason Lazarski with that three. We said that was about the first open outside shot he got. And he's their, he's their three-point threat if he can get open. Here's a three-pointer in the air. It's good by Sean Anderson. We're tied again. 20-20. And Sean Anderson with some perfect vision from the court on that three-point attempt. 
Ludden in the front court, very patient in the offensive end this trip. Mazarski drives, they cleared out for him and he scores. Yeah, he took advantage of the reach factor that time. The CBA kids have been reaching and jabbing, so you just go by him if they're going to reach. It's a, it's a perfect setup if you got the lane. Good clear out by Ludden. Mazarski provides nice offense from the point guard position, averaging 10 points a game. Seeger still hasn't scored. That'll change soon, we're sure. Good defense on there. See, everything, like I said earlier, is being channeled. Shots, passes, good aggressive beat. We'll have a foul on the floor. And one of the reasons why Seeger hasn't scored, Steve Antuna is checking him defensively. Pat Donnelly talked about that matchup. He was toying with the idea of putting Antuna on Jeff Seeger. And I'll tell you what, Steve Antuna has done a sensational job defensively for Ludden tonight. Rangy kid, that long rangy arm and his knee has really bothered him. At least the two shots he tried to take, that's twice he went up and had to change into a passing mode. Ball dribbles out of bound on the baseline as Campolita tried to take the pass down low. Substitution for CBA, Dave Paulus comes back onto the court and Sean Anderson heads to the sideline. You know what's interesting too, that both teams high scoring outfit, so you think, you know, offense would be dominating, but dominant in their minds. But both teams are just, I mean, tonight's focus is defense. You can see it all over the place. They he want the deal by Seeger. He'll throw it up from three. Off the back of the rim, won't fall. Rebound stolen away by CBA. Joe Leone couldn't finish. We have another foul though. I think it's going to be on Steve Antuna. Watch the, sh watch the shot. Now watch Antuna down our right-hand side. See if we can pick it up. Ball is up. And Leon does get the nice rebound, but he can't finish. And they're up. And you can see Mike Preston pointing over to the right. And there was a little bit of a push-off in there. Right there. Long three-pointer is up. A little bit too long. Rebound tapped into the hands of CBA and John Law, and he scores again. Six points for Law inside. Well, you know you mentioned earlier, Ted, before the game, that CBA is a scrappy rebounding team. They, if you get the rebound on, they're going to try and knock it away, but they have kept the ball alive a lot on the offensive end for some more opportunities. They really have attacked the offensive glass, and it's paid off with some easy chances inside. As Harsky drives, he stops about 10 feet away from the hoop, kicks it back outside. Yeah, CBA well, sticking with the man-to-man -man defense. That shot rejected from behind. We have a whistle, though. And CBA's John Law doesn't really agree with that call. See the pass in here? A nice move by Campbell. crosses over, tries to go up with his left, and gets hammered by Law on the arm and couldn't complete it. But did the job. I mean, he took it right to the glass, and now he gets two shots. Pat Campbellita, 73% from the line. He has six points tonight and a couple of boards as well. First shot's a little bit long. And a little hard on the first one. As we told you earlier, Campolita scored 18 points in the first meeting of the season between these two teams. And now Campolita's three of four from the line as he connects on his second free throw attempt. And Chris has been on the bench for a while, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Those two personal fouls against Chris Campolita. Seager goes behind the back. Entry pass is stolen away by Ludden. Lazarski trying to finish. His shot is tipped, oh. but he scores anyway. I didn't think he was going to get it. He had a hard time gathering in, but he makes a nice play to get it and put it up on the glass. And we have a timeout called by Buddy Wapinski with Ludden leading 25 to 22. And I believe that's Ludden's largest lead of the game. Exactly my thoughts. I, you know, because CBA jumped up early and then Ludden fought back for the longest time and that's gotta be their biggest lead. And here's the play that, uh, the other end, there's just nothing there. I mean, can't believe it just holds the ground like a middle linebacker on that play. Nobody's coming through here and nice outlet to Jason Lazarski, which he fumbles a little watch. Can't get it, can't get it, but doesn't pick it up. That's a good play because he keeps his dribble that way and is able to finish off with a nice high kiss off the board. And he scored over the outstretched arm of John Law, who's 6'3". Yeah. 
no easy task. No, Jason Lazarski had a little a bumpy start. They were, you know, a couple turnovers, having a hard time. We said at the beginning of the game he might be a key against this different kind of defenses we thought we'd see from CBA, but it's been the hard man that's caused all the problems. And uh, Jason settled down a little bit. You'd expect that from both teams at this point to start settling in a little better now. CBA has been cold tonight from the perimeter. 9 of 23, 39%. Ludden just 17 shots attempted, 10 of 17, 59%. CBA finally gets the ball inbounds, give and go, and a drive to the basket, but an offensive foul called against Joey Owen. They are without, they're just going to the basket. Can't believe it steps in, and I don't know about that one. You watch that one. We had the advantage, obviously, of seeing the replay. See it here. He just slides and slides and slides with him until he gets contact. Didn't look to me like he had his position established. Joe Leone. Leone picks up the foul. Yeah, he wasn't a happy camper either, was he? No, no. definitely wasn't. You have to trust his instincts coming from the Leone family. Long a tradition of basketball in Syracuse and beyond. And still with his sister, his twin sister is, a, I believe, the leading scorer on the girls' team at CBA. So, a lot of basketball in that family. Ludden controls in the backcourt. Leading by three at home. These two teams met earlier this season. CBA came from 15 points down to win by 16. Ball nearly stripped away by CBA. Ludden regains, but Siegler is fouled on his way to the basket. Well, we've got Siegler back again. He had a nice little stretch. Watch the replay here. Getting in, and he manages to stay with it. He's a strong guy. And there he gets hacked as he tries to bring it up. A little hesitant. That they've been, you know, that they've got a good inside power game. Look at the size of Sigler. And, and, and Pat Campley is a big guy and his brother Chris. They can get the ball inside. They just haven't. The great defensive pressure being put on the ball by CBA has not allowed them to set up and do that. Siegler fouled by John Law. And that's Law's third personal foul. So he may be sitting for the rest of this half. Right. I was thinking earlier. Remember all the blocks and all the attempted steals? If they continue at that high level of emotion to try and block everything to block it. You've got to be careful that sooner or later you're going to get nailed with fouls. You've got to be careful of that. I, you know, it might force them into a zone again. Siegler makes one of two. A 26-22 lead for Ludden now. Down to nearly two minutes remaining in the second quarter. And the last time these two teams played, the late stages of the first half, CBA put on quite a run. Sacco scores from the perimeter. Man. He's perfect, isn't he? Is he three for three? Get in the ball. So. He's got six points on the night. Makes it a two-point game. CBA with some full-court pressure. Ludden having a tough time. They finally break it. And the pass to Siegel all alone on the baseline. He scores. Great job. Got the ball to the middle and then found the man cutting down the baseline. Another steal as Pat Campolita takes it away. And the ball nearly taken away from behind by Sacco. Lazarski regains. And they're badgering the ball still. CBA now, we see, do we see the 1-3-1 one, one here? I don't know. Maybe, well, what was his own? Lazarski for three. Ball deflects out of bounds off Ludden, so CBA will take over in the backcourt, trailing by four. We get a little example right there of the crowd conditions, like right there on the baseline they're trying to save the ball. There's pretty good room on the baseline, but as you look directly on the sideline over there, not a heck of a lot of room as the crowd is spilling out towards the floor. Ludden with three steals to CBA's two. John Wolf number 44 is checked in for CBA. Dave Paulus is out. Anderson drives and he draws a blocking foul against Art Harrison. Now I'll tell you what, CBA is not afraid to, you know, just attack that basket. Here they come again. But every time you attack, someone's going to try and draw the charge. And that definitely no position on that um, job. Harrison did not actually almost undercut him. So you, you're so anxious sometimes. You're so anxious. They're trying so hard to draw the charge that uh, they'll put themselves maybe in a position where there is no chance. Anderson scores from the line. We'll have another shot coming up here. He struggled from the stripe this season, shooting just 50%. Three throws, pressures as we head toward halftime. And Anderson can't get the second one to drop. Siegler with the rebound. Down to a minute to go in the first half. 
trying to attack the zone. Well, now they're trying to figure out which way they want to go after it. CBA thought about the trap in the corner, then backed off. Yeah, this is 1-3-1. Ludden spreading the floor. Got him some problems, but I'm surprised CBA would use it in the first half because then it gives you half time to talk it over. But isn't this about the way they did it in the last game? Yes. Towards the end of the second quarter, they put it in and it made a big key. Siegler on the back door. Wolf rejects it. CBA trying to finish. Siegler oh. lays it in. That was a great play. I mean, what a catch and what an athletic move in midair. Sensational play by Jeff Seeger, and he's on the scoreboard. Ludden may want to hold for the final shot of the half. Down to 15 seconds to go. Ludden with a one-point lead. CBA boots the ball out of bounds. So Ludden will take over. 11 seconds left to go before halftime. A one-point lead for the Gaelic Knights. This zone is forcing them out of being... And they call a timeout, they can't even get it in. Steve Antuna calls the timeout, and when he did, Buddy Wachlinski punched his fist. He likes what he sees from his brothers since they switched to that 1-3-1 zone. And Pat Donnelly seemingly upset as we watch him from behind. Wow, you're right. I mean, he's, he's after somebody about, you know, I'm sure whatever the gist of that is, is we've worked on this all week, fellas, and you're supposed to be, you know, wherever he wants somebody. Obviously, somebody wasn't where they were supposed to be and putting the ball where he wanted it. We both spoke with both coaches earlier this week, and I remember Pat Donnelly saying, let's just enjoy the atmosphere of having so many people in our building, such a great game on the line, all the importance of the game. And if we lose, then we lose, and let's enjoy it. But you got to believe he wants his team to win extremely. <laughs> Badly after the loss earlier this season at CBA. I got news for you. That's good pregame talk and that's good postgame talk, but it doesn't work during the 32 minutes of the game. It's all win, and it's on everybody's mind on both teams. Once the game began tonight, we could see both teams extremely hungry for this victory tonight. It's going to go right down to the wire. Five seconds to go in the half. Lazarski has got to get rid of the ball. Siegler a long shot. He scores at the buzzer. The center, Mark Siegler. At 6'4", 220, drills the jumper at the buzzer, and the Gaelic Knights have a three-point lead at the half. And you look at the difference of, the, of the, how both teams went off that floor. Ludden roared into that locker room. They were gone off the floor in about 2.8 seconds, and the CBA kids have just walked off. See, Sigler, here's what's going to trigger the exit. Boom. They were almost lucky to get that because they almost had the ball jammed that they have court line. Big hit by Sigler. He's come up with some big baskets for him. First half was terrific. Second half should be just as exciting. Ludden leads by three at the break. More from Bishop Ludden High School right after this on Time Warner Cable. from landowners is not only courteous appreciate your call yesterday well, appreciate you letting us hunt here mr Brown. it's a requirement of safe and responsible hunting have a good time thank you mr fry see you on the way back remember we treat mr fry's property like it's our own because hunting safety isn't inherited yeah right. you have to teach it let's go come on, come on. for more information on hunter education in new york call your local department of environmental conservation office Halftime at Bishop Ludden High School, a huge crowd on hand for tonight's matchup between the Gaelic Knights and the brothers of CBA. And oh, look at that beautiful little baby. Yes, and there's one fan that doesn't have to leave to get their refreshments. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a look at some highlights from the first half, a terrific half of action. First, Ludden showing some offensive skills. Great job of breaking the press. See Pat Campolito with a good look away pass after they penetrated through the middle and Sigler with a finish and he was big in the first half. Some big buckets for him. You want to talk about an exciting finish. Watch this play develop. Yes. And this has been a little bit of a trademark of CBA's defense tonight. There's the block. Great block. I believe it's a quick outlet and a long pass. Now watch the finish here by Seeger. Great catch in here. You know, Buddy Wilkinski said he's the best athlete in the school. And I don't doubt him after watching that play. Great catch. Great conversion. And take a quick look at the stats here. 
Uh, London has been hot from the field, 60%. The CBA only 41%, but they've had uh, problems with turnovers and the rebounds surprising CBA with the advantage there, 10 to 8. And uh, blocks amazing, 6 by CBA, 2 to London. I mean, everybody's going after the ball. I'm afraid it could cause foul trouble if they're not careful. And the CBA bench has contributed 8 points, only 2 for London, so they've got a little more mileage out of their bench. Both teams very active defensively, as we like to do at the half of all of our games here on Time Warner Cable. We'll meet the cheerleaders from both schools. First for CBA, Carolyn Bush, Lady Cabrera, Jason Campanello, Kate Cartini, Lenore Semino, Kristen Dreschler, Amanda Feldman, Aaron Fisher, Caitlin Holmes, Shannon Moynihan, Kim Neary, Liz Nicoletti, Becky Phelan, Dave Pilger, Katie Seeger, Kim Thornton, Danielle Verone, C.J. Wise, and they're coached by Judy Tornaby. And they are making a lot of noise tonight, as are the fans here at Bishop Ludden High School. Big squad, too, huh? There's that crowd again. And, and the Bishop Ludden cheerleading squad is Nikki Ellington, Jessica Deer, Amanda Godleski, Katie Hatch, Jessica Haney, Melissa Hedges, Stephanie Miller, Courtney Taylor, Dominika Trelinska, Stephanie Webb. They're coached by Elizabeth Barnes, who is the head coach, and her assistant is Linda Sharon. Getting set for the start of the second half. After this timeout, we'll have second half action underway from Bishop London High School. When you send UNICEF greeting cards, the world's poorest children will be given clean water, some percent of the medicines, and schools and teachers. And that means that more children will be able to live and grow. Families and corporations buy UNICEF greeting cards because these cards save lives. For a catalog or store nearest you, call 1-800-4-KIDS or visit any Pier 1, Ikea, or Saks. Eddie Vela doesn't believe in heroes. Look, what is it? He just wants his son to go to college. It's a worm. He's joined scores of volunteers in the barrio. One, two, three. They're helping children build brighter futures. You don't have to believe in heroes to be one. Be a hero to a child in your community. Call 1-800-6-CHILDREN. Hi, you know, Chuck has tried to talk me into using those chat rooms, but it's sort of like buying the Inquirer. I just can't bring myself to do it. But then I said, try Point and Click's new chat room and online forum just for viewers of Point and Click right at our website. So I said, why not? And why don't you join us Monday at 7 for Point and Click and an introduction to our very own chat room. And then you can try the one called Wild Harley Riders. You're watching your neighborhood network, Cable 13. As we get set for the start of the second half here at Bishop Ludden High School tonight, the high score is on the evening. Siegler for Bishop Ludden with 11 points. Lazarski and Pat Campolita with 7 points apiece. Jolion leads the way for CBA. Sacco and Law. Six points apiece, but the big man in the middle for CBA, John Law, does have three personal fouls. Right, and Chris Campolita for Ludden had two, and he really sat out for a good uh, the whole second quarter. And what, what did he go out, about halfway through the first? Pretty much, yeah. He, he sat for a large portion of that first half. So they, CBA. Saved, they saved him, they got away with it, is what I wanted to say. CBA gets the ball in bounds to start the second half, and Seeger is fouled on the field goal attempt. Watch the quick lob in, a, a designed out of bounds play right off the start, and boom. I don't know who picked that up. Did, did Camp lead it or Antuna? I believe it was Antuna. Okay. And if, if that's the case, that's his third personal foul. Well, they were both there, and I would have to say <laughs> it was my call that Antuna got him first and, and maybe uh, Pat Camp lead a second. And that is the third personal foul for Steve Antuna, who's been checking Jeff Seeger all evening and doing a fine job. Seeger with just two points so far. He makes his second free throw. 30 to 28. Bishop Ludden on top in the home white, twin, uh, twinned in green, moving right to left here in the second half. 
CBA and the visiting purple trimmed in gold. But I, that's a zone, but it didn't look like a 1-3-1. It started out, but it almost looked like it went back into a 1-2-2. Two, two. We have a kick ball, but I don't think either team had possession as the ball was rolling away. Well, it's not going to matter much because Ludden's going to get it back. Watch. There it is. It looks like a scrum, doesn't it? Yeah. Neither team had possession when that ball was rolling around on the court, although it was kicked by a CBA player. So, Bishop Ludden has the ball offensively with a two-point lead. Chris Campolita back into the game after having a very quiet first half spent mostly on the bench. CBA is now in that 1-3-1 zone we've been talking about all evening long. I don't know if it is a 1-3-1. It looks like a 1-2-2, two, two, doesn't it? It's, well, it's hard to tell because there were two men back down to the basket, but the, that time a little more patient dissecting and getting themselves a good shot. Siegler drives for the layup. He's the leading scorer on the night for both teams with 13 points. He's had a big night against CBA's defense. Nice give and go between Seeger and Law, but it's taken away by Ludden. Siegler again. Misfires this time. Seeger with the rebound. He's been there, though, for a lot of opportunities. Anderson passed up the three. Now the three from the corner is very short by Joe Leon. I think Jason Lazarski got there. He got a piece of it. Definitely, definitely forced it. He may have. Ludden trying to add to its four-point lead, 32-28. Antuna controls in the corner. CBA sticking with that zone defense. Nothing much there. Chris Campolita. Three-pointer won't fall. Antuna follows and lays it in. See, there's a disadvantage when you're in the zone. Sometimes you get out of rebounding position because you don't have really man assignments on the blockouts. Lazarski nearly had a steal. CBA gets it back. Long jumper in the air, and it scores. John Law with the bucket from the left corner. Great feed by Sean Anderson, though. I mean, he set it up beautifully. And Buddy Wiklinski, I believe he's calling for that to be a three-point bucket. But it's a two. Now motioning to his defense. He's got three and a fifth, and here we go. This is... Now they're coming, they're stretching down. See, we're, we can just see him coming to our picture now. Seeger, it's like a stretched out 1-3-1 one, one, where they're... Turnover is fairly even on the night. Nine for Ludden, eight for CBA. Watch this, they're going to try and trap it right over half court, see if Ludden responds. Bishop Ludden will certainly be tested by CBA's defense tonight. All kinds of different formations. Open three-point shot in the air, rolls around the rim, won't fall, and two to Oh, end. boy, again. And foul. Ludden is finding scores uh, from different places here. Sigler's been big and Antuna's been big right off the bat in this half. Nice tip to keep it alive and then gathers it back in. That was a great play. Little volleyball tip and then a basketball finish. Watch it again from this angle. Ball rattles off the rim. Antuna can't get it, so he tips it to himself and then uses the glass. I love to see him use the glass like that. And he will get a free throw attempt. After the timeout called by CBA, huge crowd here at Bishop Ludden tonight. This is a game folks have been talking about in this area all week long, calling it the holy war <laughs> between these two parochial powers. Well, then who's God going to be for if they're both Catholic schools? I mean, you know, you've got to play it down the middle tonight. I think so. Let the players decide it on the court. How's there, that? There you go. They're on the stage. They're just about everywhere. Seats and parking spaces. I mean, I, a premium tonight. We got here, I got here a little after you, Ted. I got here before the JV game started, and the line was coming out. You couldn't park. You had to be parked almost down on Grand Ave. The lots was were filled right away. I mean, if I wasn't, if I didn't know I was going to be able to sneak in the back door here because we're on the crew tonight, I would have just turned around and went home because it, it, it looked uh, it looked like it was going to be tough. The shooting for CBA on the season, 47 percent tonight. It's 40 percent. Ludden, round about that 58% mark for the season and tonight as well. Antuna's free throw is good, so he completes the three-point play. An eight-point lead for Ludden. Yep, they almost jammed that up there. You can see Sean Anderson saying almost, almost he did. It was a good look. They have been 
London's got to be aware that every time if they take just a little easy step getting back on the court, they're going to push it ahead of them. It's actually a seven-point lead. The scoreboard registered the two points when Antuna made that free throw. So it's 37 to 30. CBA down seven. Nice feed and the layup by Sean Anderson. Hey, the old-fashioned give and go. He dumped it in the corner and they caught him back driving down the lane. Let's see what CBA's defense does. Ludden spreading the floor and a foul is called against Sean Anderson and visibly upset after he is whistled for the foul, reaching in against Steve Antuna. Well, they, they have been aggressive. Watch the pass into the corner and then right back to Anderson who makes a little fancy move there. Nice style. Good style point, Sean. Did a good job to keep the ball between, uh, or keep his body between the ball and the basket. Yeah. Antuna with a long jumper from the corner. It's good. A three-pointer for Steve Antuna. He has scored eight points in the second half. Some key people stepping up, huh? I mean, if you said that Campolita, Chris Campolita, was going to be not getting hardly any points at this stage of the ball game, you, you would think Ludden would have been in trouble instead of being up by eight points. Open jumper on the way, and it's good for CBA and John Law showing some good range. He has 10 points, the leading score for CBA tonight, and it's a six-point game. So whenever Ludden tries to pull away, CBA keeps it close. Well, they don't take much time getting off the shot, do they? They just get right back and get it up. Three-point stats on the night. CBA, three of nine. Ludden, three of six Ludden on the little, evening. Yeah, Ludden a little more patient with the ones they've taken, but CBA willing to take more shots. Pat Campolita drives and scores. He has nine points. CBA throws it away. It's touched by Ludden, though, and CBA will retain possession in the offensive end. Joe Leon will trigger. It's an eight-point lead for Ludden, 42-34. Four minutes left to go in the third quarter. A lot of basketball left to go. A foul called against Ludden as Sam Lampuri went up for the shot. Looks to be against Pat Campolita. Boy, CBA has got a knack of finding an open man. Pat Campolita just was drifting. He was daydreaming just for a second, and they zipped it right in there. And they're always looking for it. Well, watch this play. Just for a second, Pat Campolita looked over to the other side of the court, and the ball was zipped right in there and caught him by surprise. So you can't look away uh, with the penetration in the, in the passing by the CBA kids is, is bullet quick. I mean, they're just ready to go. Sam Lampuri makes his first free throw attempt. His first point of the night. He's a 56% shooter from the line. The 6'2 junior. Taking his time. And he gets the friendly roll. And the visitor hoops it. Those are rolls are supposed to only be on the CBA rims. Six point lead for Bishop Ludd. And CBA comes up with the steal as John Law deflected the pass. Big trip for CBA to keep it close. Lampuri behind the screen. It's going to be a kick. That'll reset the shot clock. 45 second shot clock in effect in boys high school basketball as Pat Donnelly shouts signals from the Ludden sideline. It's never been a problem for the CBA kids. They haven't come close, but they have forced Ludden a couple times to hurry towards the end of it. Yes, they have. CBA's defense will keep them in this game or perhaps put them over the top as they try to win it on the road. And a foul, top of the key, committed by Ludden. No question about that. Yeah, Although, yeah. Chris Campolita looks to be pretty upset. Yeah, I don't know if he, is he upset with himself or somebody missed an assignment because he just, that was a shove right to the backside. Third personal foul against Chris Campolita. Once again, CBA puts the ball in play. Lampuri shot, rejected by Chris Campolita. And Ludden has faced to attack this 1-3-1, like a three-quarter quarter, a half-court 1-3-1, really. They've extended it out quite a ways. Just barely getting the ball over mid-court. The open man, Antuna, shoots. Wild shot by him tonight. Seeger with the rebound. Knocks two Ludden players down and drives. His shot is short. And a foul inside as players from both teams scrambling for the rebound. Yeah, there have been stages tonight where it hasn't been pretty, but there's been a lot of hustle. Watch this. It could have been a travel there. He got away with it. Now, look, he has the presence of mind 
to not roll over and pick it up where he could travel. He keeps his dribble like an old globetrotter routine, kind of. Looks like a former Pittsburgh point guard, Sean Miller, on The Tonight Show. When he was a kid, remember Yeah, that? yeah, he had all the dribbling exhibitions, right. Entry pass knocked out of bounds, so CBA will put the ball in play once again. Trailing by six, 42-36, here in the third quarter at Bishop Blood. You know, if you were a trainer for either team tonight, you'd be addressing a lot of floor burns at the end of the night, definitely. Liam Curry to the top of the key and law. Off the back iron. Rebound battled for. Still up for grabs. Lazarski comes up with it. Ahead to Harrison. He scores. Great outlet by Jason Lazarski. He picked his head up quick. You love your guards to get your head up and see who's running. Art Harrison release. He snuck down the other end of the court. Nice left-handed shot by Sean Anderson. There's just not much time to celebrate with CBA because they don't get down. Bing, they're right back down. They're right back penetrating on you. Still a six-point game. Ludden has to hurry to get the ball over mid-court. That was definitely 10 seconds, no call. I had my eyes on the shot clock. It was at 34. Spinning shot won't go by Chris Campolita. Pat Campolita had a hand on a rebound. Comes up with it. 15-footer up in the air. Rattles around. Rebound, CBA and Law. He lost on the way down. We have a foul. A little frustration on Pat Campolita. We mentioned earlier that the CBA kids love to try and strip you when you come down with the ball. See him in there? Strip, 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 grab, grab. Now Pat takes it out to the corner, a little bit upset probably, and he throws up the shot and misses. Now he decides, I'm going to come in and strip them if they get the rebound. The CBA clearly has a rebound. He tries, only he gets a lot of arm and nailed. He gets nailed. He gets caught. Third personal foul against Pat Campolita. Long with a long jumper. Misses everything. Rebound taken by Ludden. And the battling Bishops have to try to keep this one in play. Whoa. It's a tough CBA defense. Buddy Wachinski wanted a traveling violation. Chris Campolita is hacked by Joe Leon. He picks up the foul. <laughs> and, and so did about... Buddy didn't like the man call and a 500 CBA officials up there with, with their uh, opinion didn't like it either. But Buddy Wachinski wills this team to victories. He puts on quite a show on that CBA sideline with uh, the animated gestures, and he is into every moment of this game without a doubt. Well, Buddy's a great guy, and he just is just so excited about both coaches, just so excited to have this ball game tonight. Pat Donnelly just as intense, no question about that. Pat Campolita scores! 11 for Pat Campolita, back to an eight-point lead for Ludden. CBA oh. tries to get the ball to the cutting Lampuri. It's knocked out of bounds, and Ludman will take over in the backcourt. Lampuri couldn't handle the pass. The battle here has been the quickness of CBA, the quickness in attacking versus the strength and height of Ludman. CBA comes up with another steal. The Seeger is stripped, and Seeger drives for the layup. 46 to 40. CBA coming with more pressure. Oh boy, did you see Buddy on the sideline there? He's gonna get a hole in the knees of those pants. I hope it's not an expensive suit. Down to 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter as Ludden works it around. CBA, very tough defense on this trip. The foul Whoa. is called against Sean Anderson as he went for the strip. Now Sean doesn't like it, but Sean, you clobbered him. And it was actually a good foul, Sean, because if, you, if he didn't get in there and break up that play, it was going to be an easy two. So Bishop Ludden will retain possession in the offensive end. Fresh shot clock with 31 seconds left to go in this third quarter, so Ludden could hold for the final shot of the third. Paulus has checked back in as Anderson goes to the bench. Pat Campolita working on the baseline. He's fouled, and he'll go to the line. And I think it's going to be on Seeger. Watch Pat Campolita just muscle his way in. He's just going to muscle his way in here. See, this position he's got is just pure strength. Now he's going to muscle it up, and which is the right thing to do. Don't pass. Don't do anything. Go up, draw the foul, maybe even score the basket. Campolita at the line. Foul looked to be against Brian Sacco of CBA. Number okay. 33. And Campolita misses his first free throw attempt. A little bit of tiredness in that one. Get it up there now. Connects on the second one. 
12 points for Pat Campolita and a seven point lead for Ludden. Seeger. CBA, Ludden score on this trip. Driving layup is short. And Siegler grabs the rebound for Ludden. Five seconds to go. Chris Campolita drives. Great That was a beauty. And that gives Bishop Ludden a nine point lead. At the end of the third quarter, Chris Campolita scoring his first bucket of the night. It could not come at a better time for Ludden. A nine point lead for the Gaelic Knights with three quarters in the books. We'll come back with an exciting finish for you from Bishop Ludden High School right after this on Time Warner Cable. Last time oh. on Pueblo 81009. Barker, remember using the spree cap I could send to the spree in low-cost government publications on saving money, getting federal benefits, being healthy, and a catalog of spree. Free? Information on educating our children? Send your name and address to new catalog Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Don't forget, like Marco. Marco? Who's Marco? Uh. Welcome back to Bishop Ludden High School as we see some of the action from the third quarter tonight. Very physical play beneath the boards. Yeah, a nice rebound by Sigler who's done a great job. And then the outlet, we see come down. We're, we're getting down inside 10 seconds, so they know they got to hurry. So Campolita, Chris Campolita gets it. He knows nothing to do but go to the basket. Watch this body control as he hooks back, knows he's going to get clobbered and makes the shot. That's his first bucket. And there's his second. Campolita scores again. Wow. An 11-point lead for Ludden. I didn't realize he hadn't scored at all, but I knew he was been, had been quiet, but they've done well to, to survive it without him, and now if he gets alive, it could be big trouble for CBA. Seeger has also been quiet, though. Three-pointer up. It's short. Rebound controlled by the brothers. That entry pass taken away by Seeger. Nice effort by CBA, but a little careless with the ball. Ludden can take a 13 or 14-point lead on this trip. Chris Campbell a shot block from behind. Great defensive play by Paulus. And what was nice about that series, I watch this, this is just attacking that 1-3-1. Whether they block it or not doesn't matter. It's got to make Pat Donnelly happy because he felt in the first game they didn't attack. They stood flat footed against the 1-3-1, and that certainly was an attack. Ludden will put the ball in play from the baseline. Chris Campolita quickly double-teamed. Harrison has a wide-open three. It's long. Mazarski had a hand on the rebound, but it's taken away by Seeger and CBA. He stripped from behind. Pat Campolita, Lazarski now. Chris Campolita can't handle it. The ball is deflected out of bounds by CBA. Well, I said earlier, it hasn't been pretty at all times. And we take a quick look at the stats. See the three point, uh, uh, three for nine for CBA, three for six for the Ludden kids. But the rebound's a big thing there. Ludden now starting to take over, 17 to 12. Turnovers are starting to even up. But the CBA surprisingly still ahead on the blocks. Lazarski's inbounds pass too long. And another block shot from behind by Chris Campolita. CBA had the steal and they couldn't finish. Whoa. Technical foul is called by one of the officials. A battle away from the ball and perhaps some words said. We won't speculate on exactly what happened, but we can tell you a technical foul has definitely been assessed and by the reaction of Pat Donnelly. It's against Ludden. Yeah, exactly. that looks to be the case. And this is a prelude to why the emotions are just super high, but watch all the physical action here. People on the floor. Here we come against Seeger trying to penetrate. There's a strip from behind. On the floor. Two on the floor. Almost on the floor. Three on the floor. Four on the floor. And then on the floor, five. Come on, finish it off because you're going to see a couple more dives. Everybody's out there spilling their body. At the line for CBA, Joe Leone, a 61% free throw shooter. And he is shooting the technical foul free throws here. Misses the second one. It was a big technical because Ludden had the ball. So they lost the possession and uh, only one point. He only made one out of two, but still it could be a three-point turnaround. 
We'll see what CBA does on this possession. The technical foul obsessed against Bishop Blood. We don't know who, though, if it was Campolita, that's going to go on the first one because it looked like he came out of the pack, and I don't, but they really didn't announce it, so I don't know who it was on. I feel the same way you do about that. I believe it was Chris Campolita, but we can't be sure, so uh, we'll try to nail that down for you as we go. CBA with a 10 point deficit. Big trip for the brothers. Seeger tries to find the open man. He finally does. Joe Leone penetrates, throws it up, and he gets the roll. They have just been that much quicker to the basket all night. That's been uh, the matchup we talked about. Here comes the CBA pressure. Harrison tries to bring the ball over midcourt, and he does successfully. Nearly lost it, though, and they'll call another foul against CBA. Looks to be against Sean Anderson. He's been whistled for a couple of fouls of that nature. Interesting CBA and a man now down this game. They're down by eight with six minutes to go, and they feel like to get back in, it's going to have to be man at this point. Harrison checks out of the game, and Antuna returns. He's been quite a spark for Bishop Ludden, the senior, with 11 points. Steve Antuna and a couple of three-pointers. Third personal foul for Anderson. Ludden controls in the offensive end with an eight-point lead. Six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. The number two and number six teams in New York State. Another rejection from behind. Seeger makes the play, but he's whistled for the foul. Seeger from behind, and Sigler, it's almost accidental. Watch this. This ball kind of squirts through the middle. It was intended for Pat Campolita, but it squirted through, and Chris uh, Sigler was there to pick it up, and then Seeger got it from behind. Siegler leading Ludman scoring tonight with 13 points and his first free throw attempt is long. Free throws down the stretch will be key. Siegler 71% from the line this season. And as you can see, he's exceeded his season average with 13 points on the night. Mark's a big, strong guy now. He's got to nail the free throws. And he makes the second one. 14 points for Siegler. Second team all-league selection football. CBA quickly back the other way. Wild shot thrown up by Leon, but he picks up the foul. And that will go against Pat Campolita, so he is in some big-time foul trouble as well. Yeah. That's his fourth. Remember he did this earlier in the game, and I said it's not necessary. Now, the emotion gets the better part of him here. See, he tries that same charge move where he tried to slide, and he's definitely out of position. You know, don't fault the kid for hustle, but stay, out, stay in the game. We need you. Don't offer yourself up in a situation like that where we want you on the floor. I, I've never believed him. He, my top offensive players I wouldn't want my offensive players out there trying to draw charges. And that foul puts Pat Campolita on the bench with four personal fouls. John Coco, number 31, is checked in for Bishop Blood. Joe Leone's first shot is long. So he can't get the second half of the one and one. Three-pointer from the corner is long as well. Ball deflected out of bounds by CBA, so Bishop Ludden will take over. Yeah, they looked a little hurried. They're, they're, they push. They want fast tempo, but a little too hurried there. Seeler puts the ball in play. Pat Campolita on the pine with four personals. Lazarski walking the ball up against the pressure from Joe Leon. Now he's not walking it, Pat. I thought he was working hard. Him and Joe Leon, they, those guys were played for the Hamilton Street team when they were in that bitty league, so they've known each other a long time. Seeler with a nice pass down low to the guard. Lazarski who lays it in with a reverse layup. 10-point lead. Quickly back the other way. Law scores to make it a nine-point game. They have snake bitten Ludden on that a lot. Ludden gets caught napping, and they you can't. They've got to sprint down the court because they're going to throw that lead pass ahead of you. Law with 12 points. Ludden with a nine-point advantage. Still a lot of time left to go in the fourth quarter. Five minutes left to play. Lazarski controls to Siegler at the foul line. Well, see, here's a situation where maybe we see the 45-second clock take a... Blood cannot take the air out of the ball. they got to stay in their offensive tempo that they were in. Nice entry ball. Two big, two big cuts to the basket by Jason Lazarski. Nice moves without the ball to get two easy shots. Amazing. Lazarski at 5'10 has beaten CBA twice for layups. A good teamwork by Ludd to find the open man and pass the ball. Law can't get the three-pointer to drop. Ludden with the rebound, and now in its 11-point lead for Bishop Ludden as Lazarski brings the ball over midcourt. 
DBA still in this game, but time's ticking away. Siegler lost it off his foot, but Ludden hangs on to it. And Tuna, leaves okay. it in! That's the Bishop Ludden half-court offense that we've seen the last three times. They're capable of moving the ball and getting people free for easy shots. CBA's in trouble. Yep. Three-pointer on the way. Doesn't go. Seeger the rebound. Working hard. Fires up the shot and he scores. The 12-point game. Seeger gets a very important bucket for CBA. Tried to call a timeout. I don't know what here. he's thinking about. You, you, you know, once the ball's in box, you got to call that timeout while there's a dead for the ball, you know, coming through the rim and you're, before they get the inbound line. And Tuna. Rosarski wants to drive baseline again. Kicks it back out for Coco. His shot won't fall. Rebound deflects out of bounds. And it'll be blood and ball. And do we have another technical foul? Yeah, and I think Called this one's on going to go on Seeger. You could see him. He bumped the kid a couple of times. They're getting very emotional. And it's getting into their head. And it's getting the better of them. They've got to settle down if they want to get back in the ball game. Seeger is called for the technical foul. So Ludden will have a couple of free throws and possession. Bishop Ludden already leads by 11, 58 to 47, with 321 to go in the fourth quarter. Lazarski's first shot is good. The fans here at Ludden can smell victory. Jason's come up big for him with Campolita in foul trouble. Both Campolitas really. Jason's been there for him and he's had a big quarter. Ludden has a 13-point lead and the ball after the two free throws by Lazarski following the technical foul against Jeff Seeger of CBA. Mark Seeger will put the ball in play right in front of us. Okay, guys, you got to play hard, but you've got to play under control. Here comes Bishop Ludd, leading by 13, trying to avenge that 15 or 16 point loss earlier this season at CBA. And a foul is called inside. That one will go against John Law of CBA. Now, you see, after two technicals, it's going to tighten up. And that's going to make it all the harder for CBA because what they need to really do is apply, keep applying pressure. And, and, and probably attempt to keep it physical, but they're not, it's just not going to happen the rest of the way. Pat Campolita is at the line. He is playing with four fouls, made his return a few moments ago. First shot is up, and no good. CBA controls the rebound. Big miss for one. We'll see if CBA can convert. Steger. Checked by Lazarski, gets it away. Seeger throws it up from 12 feet. Bad shot, a rebound taken by Chris Campolita. So that trip, CBA couldn't control the offensive rebound and it hurt him. The watch Ludden to try to run their half-court offense and get easy opportunities. Chris Campolita drives, throws it up, Whoa. and he gets the roll. I, man, he pulled that one off. Quickly back the other way. CBA yep. scores a bucket on the baseline as Bob Shaw drives and scores. CBA with another steal. And Tuna takes it away. Now Lazarski will try to run some clock, but he yep. has to get the ball over midcourt here. That's a key. Run some clock, but get a good shot because you know you get the clock, so it's working down. And Tuna nearly fouled. Gets the ball away. Pat Campolita once Whoa. again, Lazarski on the baseline. He has moved so well without the ball, and his teammates have found him. That's the key. They found him with the passes. 15 points for Jason Lazarski. Long shot from the corner off the side of the backboard. It'll stay CBA ball, though. A 15-point lead for Bishop Ludden with a minute 45 left to go. And there's Eddie Leone on the sideline trying to get his kids back in. That's Joey's uncle, Eddie, who would be uh, brothers to Johnny, their other uncle, Johnny, who was coach at Lafayette for years. Jason Leone, also a member of that family as well. Yeah, Jason, Jason is at Lafayette College right now. Leone family with 
years and years of basketball here in Syracuse. But it's their brother Joe who's got all the kids playing for CBA, see? Joe's the father who's brought all this talent into the CBA pool. Eddie and Johnny are going to have to catch up. The fans here at Bishop London loving what they're seeing tonight. Their Gaelic Knights are closing in on evening the season series with the Brothers of CBA. CBA's only loss of the season came to Cato Meridian on January 3rd of 49-46 setback. And then earlier this week, Cato Meridian took on CBA again, and the brothers won by 14. And there's Johnny Hayes, JV coach for Ludden. Long time. Johnny's been coaching for a long time here at Ludden. Chris Campolita comes up with the steal, and he is quickly fouled by Sean Anderson, who can't believe it. And that's the fourth personal foul for Sean Anderson. My goodness. You see, CBA just hasn't been able to find that three-point range this second half. I mean, I feel... They wanted to move the ball. They've done a good job moving the ball court, but you can see they've rushed their outside shots a little bit. But credit Ludden again. I mean, Ludden has just stepped up the pace a little bit defensively, and their offense has been great. Actually, that foul against Anderson is fifth, so he has fouled out. CBA no longer with its point guard in the game. And now Bishop Ludden is at the line shooting free throws and padding their lead, similar to what happened earlier this season when CBA took on Bishop Ludden at home. A lot of free throws down the stretch turned that into a, a lopsided finish. Chris Campolita makes them both. Yeah, you can just feel the celebration starting to take place here now. All that pregame hype, all that emotion, and the, the, the Ludden kids are really starting to feel it, that they've got it, and CBA reeling quite a bit. Another foul as CBA's Dave Paulus commits the personal. And if they're forced to foul, I don't know if they got enough time to make enough fouls to slow things down. Turnover situation on the night. CBA with its problems in the second half. 16 for the game. Ludden with 15 total for the night. Taking better care of the basketball in the second half. And once again, Campolita at the stripe. Connects on another free throw as Pat Donnelly looks on, watching his Gaelic Knights close in on victory this evening at home. Campolita's second shot is also good, and the Gaelic Knights are going to win this game. Yep, they, they had the answers. I mean, CBA came out with hard man against them, which confused them early, but Ludden had the answers against the zone, and then the man the second time around, and that was the difference. Three-point shot from the corner is good by Joe Leon. And that's, as we saw earlier, that's going to be the first one they made this half, and it might be a little too late. 13 points for Leon. Foul in the backcourt by CBA. And the call goes against Bob Schock as Buddy Wiklinski looks on from the sidelines. Steve Antuna goes to the line. What a second half Antuna has had scoring 10 points after halftime. Yeah, he was a key player early in the first half. Remember, second half when he came out early and made a couple big baskets. They've gotten they've gotten help from all around, really, the Ludden kids. I mean, okay, Chris Campley doesn't have a big night, but he makes a couple big baskets. And Pat's maybe not as big as he was earlier, but he's played some, done a great job on the boards. And Sigler stepped up. I mean, everybody's contributed. Jason Lazarski, he's had a great game. And Tuna makes both free throws. Another three-pointer by Leon is good. So Joe Leon now with 16 points. Ludden breaks the pressure. And Pat Campolita lays it in. All five of Ludden starters have scored in double figures. Long three-pointer. Dave Paulus. That's about a 25-footer, wasn't it? CBA fighting for the steal. Antuna finally gets it away. Leon comes up with the steal now. Got fouled. Oh, yeah, that's going to be three shots. So three That's shots good. from the line for CBA after that foul is called against the Gaelic Knights. And, and they're going to have a timeout. Yeah, Pat Donnelly wants timeout, wants to talk that over. Okay, 72 to 58, 14 points. It's not so big, but, it, you know, 
You don't want to do it. You don't want to give him any chance. It looks pretty bleak for CBA. Interesting situation. They're both 12-1 and one now in the league, so this is going to give Ludden a real big chance to win the league, obviously, unless they trip up on the way in. It's, as you mentioned earlier, CBA loses to Cato Murdy in a game that I'll bet you they wish they could have back because they might have been looking ahead. The Bishop Ludden cheerleaders, very there happy. Home team fans fired up. 47 seconds remaining in the game and a 14-point lead for Bishop Ludden. And if Ludden doesn't win this game, we can talk about this CBA comeback for years to come. Well, we'll see if that can happen. I wouldn't bet on it. Look at this three from about, what, 25, 30 feet out, nothing but net. That's almost worth four points from out there huh, so far. And you see there, that you see that CBA has just been stone cold in the second half, and Ludden has maintained a very consistent field goal percentage. Better shot selection, maybe, closer in shots. But CBA knows they're going to do that because they're willing to go out and fire the threes and, and try to, you know, take some risky kind of kind of shots. Joe Leone at the stripe to get three free throw attempts. Misses the first. Leone with 16 points on the night and four three-pointers. Yeah, and you see Buddy screaming at him over there. Come on, come on. He's still in. He's not giving up. Not giving up at all. The other interesting factor you know, that surprised him is two of those is now they go into sectionals. And I believe if you look down the sectionals, you see Little Falls has only got one loss. So three teams in their bracket have one loss. Quite possibly, Ludden and CBA now could meet each other, not in the finals, because they might be seeded two and three, they will, could meet in the semis, which you know, makes a little different thing happen. Well, I, you know, I guess what's the difference? You gotta, you know, you're gonna have to face each other probably somewhere along the line, but it'd be kind of nice if they could have the rubber match in the sectional final, but it doesn't look like it'll play out that way. Well, whenever these two teams meet again, the intensity will be high. No question about that as no. the foul is called against <laughs> CBA. And uh, Mark Siegler will go to the free throw line now. What might ever make you think that? Very intense atmosphere tonight at Bishop Blood. And really no surprise that these two teams split with the team playing on its home court winning. No surprise at all if that's happened. Both of these teams uh, outstanding this season. And uh, for one team to sweep the other seems uh, pretty far-fetched. Siegler with 15 points now. And he makes both free throws. So Bishop Ludden doing a great job shooting the free throws down the stretch here. And it's a 15-point game. Wild three-pointer from the corner. Deflects out of bounds off CBA. So Ludden will have possession. These kids are still so fired up. I'd almost even consider getting somebody out of the game at this point so nobody get hurt, you know, because they're still banging each other pretty hard, and it's over. I mean, 34 seconds, 15-point comeback. Don't let anybody get hurt here. Long pass is intercepted by CBA and John Wolf. Long three-pointer up by Shaw. He misfires. Another three-pointer in the air. That bounces off the rim. Another shot in the air. Looks to be a foul against Bishop Blood. And, and Pat Donnelly still look at Sigler. Mark Sigler looking back over at Pat. He's getting chewed out right now. He probably said, Coach, man, we're up 18, we're up 15 points, 18 seconds. Lighten up. And Coach is coaching every minute, though. He's saying, what are we going to do? What are we going to do if this was a three-point game? CBA missing quite a few opportunities from the line tonight. 7 of 16 from the stripe uncharacteristic of CBA as Leon scores from the free throw line and raises his arms after going one for three from the line his last trip in, in mocking to himself I would guess huh can he yeah. make three in a row we'll see here I you know at this point I think he's they just probably just want to get on with it nice follow by John Wolf his first bucket of the night CBA refusing to quit, and we have a foul right off the inbounds pass. Oh, 
So after another foul by CBA, Steve Antuna goes to the free throw line. Antuna's had a huge second half. 10 points, or rather 12 points in the second half. 16 for the night. And as we said a few moments ago, the entire Bishop Ludden starting five, and what a night Antuna's had. The entire Ludden starting five scoring in double figures tonight. So you talk about balance. The Knights have had that going this evening. And it's very good that some of them were there to do that uh, when a couple of their big scores were a little cool early on. That pass down low and CBA can't finish. As Dave Paulus missed the shot, last three-point attempt of the night is no good, but the Bishop Ludden Gaelic Knights pull off the win and the fans storm the court. As expected, a 14-point victory by the Gaelic Knights, 76 to 62. And this season series between Bishop Ludden and CBA is all even, one win apiece. And we'll come back to Bishop Ludden High School, a jubilant atmosphere as you can tell. To meet our Time Warner Cable player of the game, we'll run down the final stats and talk with Ludden head coach Pat Donnelly as well. The Gaelic Knights win by 14, 76 to 62. Back with the post game right after this on Time Warner Cable. Hi, this is Edward James Olmos, and as an actor, I've had many important roles, but none as important as the role the Shriners play in the lives of young children. Over half a million kids with orthopedic and burn problems have been helped, totally free of charge, at 22 Shriners hospitals. If you know a child under 18, the Shriners might be able to help. Call this toll-free number. Shriners help kids get back on their feet, don't they? Shriners Hospitals, 1-800-237-5055. We're here with our Time Warner player of the game, Jason Lazarski of Bishop Ludden. Great game, Jason. I know the win is much more important than that, but you did a nice job. Yeah, um, we came out pretty good. Actually, we uh, got down 7-0. We had to come out and hold our composure, and we just came back after that. Yeah, I noticed I had to ask you if the first game was as rough as this game physically, because I thought in the first half you guys really didn't settle into your offense as good, but in the second half, of course, you being the point guard or in charge of that, did a much nicer job in your half-court offense. Yeah, I think that was the main part of how we won the game is because uh, we finally got settled in our offense, and that's how we play with in basketball. Defense was a pretty good job, too. I mean, you held them to no three-pointers till just about a minute ago, in the, or a couple minutes ago in the second half, and I think defense was also a big key. You kind of turned the tables on them. Yeah, we played great defense until the end. I mean, that was, at the end, it was terrible. We just let them, kept, let them hit threes on us, so... It was pretty good, though, the whole game except the end. Yeah. Now, now you, you hit a three-pointer yourself, but I think a couple of the big plays you made in the second half was you were cutting without the ball. We'd like to take a look at a couple if you describe them for us. All right. Um, I'm just waiting for my man to pop out, and I got him the ball, and I saw that Joey Leon was overplaying me, so I just took him back door. Anytime they're denying us the ball, a coach teaches us to take him back door, and that's what we did. And here's another play. I just went back door again because he was denying me the ball. And I got another layup. And you know what was great, Jay? Your teammates found you, and I think that was great. You guys have been playing together for quite a while. And, and they, when you made the cut, they found you. And, and the, did you make any special adjustments at halftime to get prepared for doing something like that? Not really. Uh, we're just really unselfish out there. That's the main part. And uh, that's how we won the game. Main goal is to stay clean the rest of the way and get that league championship and then on to the sectionals? Yeah, we got Cato next week. Uh, we got to come out and play well against them. Then sectional time, so. Well, you make sure you keep that offense under control the whole way, Jay. Good luck the rest of the way. All right, thanks a lot. And we'll be right back, and Ted will talk to Pat Donnelly after a short break. Shriners Hospitals provide free expert medical care to children under 18 with bone or muscle problems. They could help many more children if only their families knew they could come to Shriners. So please help spread the word. If you know a child the Shriners could help, call this number toll free. Shriners Hospitals for Crippled Children. 1-800-237-5055. Shriners help kids get back on their feet. 
Welcome back to Bishop Ludden High School. A big win for the Gaelic Knights on their home court tonight. 76-62 over CBA. We're now joined by the head coach of Bishop Ludden, Pat Donnelly. Coach, congratulations on the great win tonight. And uh, in your mind, what allowed Bishop Ludden to pull out this win? Well, I think it was our balance. The effort that we got from not only the, the five that, that started, but from the, the off the bench. Everybody came in and contributed. And uh, you're not going to beat a good team like CBA with one or two players. And the games we got from people like Steve Antuna and Mark Ziegler and, and Art Harrison and John Coco off the bench were, were just huge for us. You know, it, it's those people that, that contributed that, that made it easier for people like Jason Lazarski and Pat Campolita to get their points. You know, it really seemed like uh, that balance was evident all evening, all, all evening long as Ziegler got hot early. And then uh, later on in the ball game, Lazarski and Antuna scored their points. Again, everybody had their moments in the game, and it was, it was a big lift for us when we got back from 7-zip. You know, we were on the ropes a little bit. We were unsure whether we, we, how, what we were going to do. And to come back from 7 down and to actually go take the lead just got our confidence back. We're, hey, it's a brand new ball game. Let's go play. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from tonight's game. First of all, uh, Pat Campolita gave your team a great lift early on. Pat's big for us. We wanted to go to Pat right away. That You know, he's 6'5", he's good with the basketball. And here we get the ball to the middle against the zone. Pat penetrates with a little pull-up jumper. And, and he's tough in that area. Anywhere from, you know, 10 feet in, if we can get the ball to Pat, we're going to be pretty successful. And also, Steve Antuna really heated up offensively in the second half. This is a huge play for us. Jason Lazarski with a three-pointer. Steve Antuna goes to the offensive boards. Again, gets a put back and the foul. I mean, that, he did a couple, that a couple of times, and it just... It gave us enough cushion where we could be tougher defensively down the stretch, and those kind of plays are the ones that carried us. You know, I don't think anybody really believed that uh, these two teams would meet this season and one team would sweep the other. Did you think that tonight was going to be your night? Well, I hoped, but, I, you know, you're never sure. I mean, the, the crowd was here, and, and again, we were a little uncertain after the first game that, you know, we lost by 16. The game was a lot closer than that. But CBA is a good basketball team, and they didn't get where they are by default. They're beating people, and they're beating them pretty good, and, and they're athletic. But... At home, I felt more comfortable, obviously, and I think that, uh, you know, when we get that kind of balance from our team, that we're going to be able to play with anybody. Coach, no question about fan support, a huge crowd on hand tonight. Congratulations on the win, and best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks. I appreciate you guys being here. It made it a complete evening. Pat Donnelly, head coach of the Bishop Ludden Gaelic Knights, a huge win at home over CBA. Once again, the final score, 76-62. to Back with the postgame numbers right after this. Kathy died real suddenly from a brain aneurysm. She was 29 years old. There was no warning. Organ donation was a very painful decision to make on my own. I wish we'd talked about it because I didn't know if I was doing the right thing. We didn't have that discussion because we thought we were young. We thought we had a lot of time, but we didn't. Welcome back to Bishop Ludden High School, a big win for the Gaelic Knights, 76-62 to in front of a big crowd, and we know now with everybody going home, George, we can at least get out of the parking lot relatively it's, easily. It's finally cleared out for us. Uh, you look at the statistics tonight, you can see that CBA was stone cold, uh, actually 45% from the field, but they were 6 for 20 from the three-point line, and at one point in the second half, they were 0 for 6, so they jammed in like the last three to pick it up, but that was a real big dig for them, because that's the staple of their game, they really want to shoot the threes. You go down a little bit, and you look at rebounds, Ludden did finally uh, take over 23-17, dominated in the second half. The turnovers turned out even, but it was a first half, second half thing where in the first half, Ludden had more turnovers, but then in the second half, they forced CBA into more, and that was kind of the story of the game. Ludden tightened up defensively, uh, they got their offense on track a little bit, and that made for the difference. A moment ago, we saw that sectional championship banner on display here at Bishop Ludden High School. You get the sense that if Ludden is once again going to go down that road, this is a big win that they'll need to help them as far as the seating is concerned. But I've always been a firm believer that the league championship is goal number one. You really want to win your league. Now, I know it's a new league and everything for them, but this will give them the inside track or almost assure them that they're going to win the league title. That's step one. As we said, sectionals come down the line, and you know CBA is going to have a lot to say about whether Bishop Ludden comes out with a sectional title or not this year. So there's more to come. And finally, as far as CBA is concerned, where do they go from here? I don't think anybody thought when you take a look at both of these teams that uh, one would sweep the other this season. Well, I, I think that, you know, they were both they both won the games on their home courts. CBA got a little cold tonight. Their effort was great. And they came out with a great defensive effort. They just couldn't sustain it. They did get in the foul trouble. So I think they can look at this and say, okay, next time it's going to be on a neutral court. We lost our chance maybe for the league title, but... You know, it'll give them a lot of motivation to want to come back. And, 
you can you can rest assured that uh, I think it'd be a real tight game. I'd like to, you know, I'll pay to see the next one. <laughs> <laughs> and we know that hundreds of fans from both CBA and Ludden will be there if these two teams should meet again. We saw a great game tonight here at Ludden. The Gaelic Knights win it by 14, 76 to 62 for George Straub, producer, director Jeff Steyer, and the entire Time Warner Cable crew. I'm Ted DeLuca. Thanks for joining us tonight at Bishop Ludden High School. Good night. I'm down here. No, here. Hit that mouse button, will you? Thanks. Have you logged on to point and click yet? It's a one-hour exploration.